This video is powered by the fastest VPN on the planet, NordVPN. Never miss a second of your favorite show, even when you're abroad. Get NordVPN two year plan plus four months extra by clicking the link below. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. AFTV, you've got Julian here just scoffing off that guy's popcorn. You know what I mean? He asked, like, me, to, he asked yeah. me to look after yeah. it. He asked you to he look after it. He didn't tell you to eat it, did he? He did. He offered it to me. And no, no, you just said he asked you to look after it. And I see you and there. He, oh, he, he offered it to me, and it's rude to refuse. Exactly. Especially if it's you. Yeah. But anyway. Um, and I'm not rude. <laughs> on the game. Yeah. Um, what did you make of it? I mean, that was a good test for Arsenal today. That was a very good test. There was a lot of positives in there. Mm. And the other thing that I think we shouldn't forget is the time difference. And I'm not forgetting it because I'm nearly asleep at the moment. <laughs> the time difference for what? What are you on about? Well, the, the, the time difference between London yeah. and here is eight hours. So yeah. it's like four or five o'clock in the morning. Now, the difference is Bournemouth got here over a week ago. Right. So they've had far more time to acclimatise. Now, you think it doesn't make a difference, but it absolutely does. Playing 90 minutes of football, and I know they didn't all play that, that long, but to play at that kind of level, it drops you, your performance by 10, 20%. So I think it was actually a better performance than you can give um, credit for. It, it, it really was. It really was quite excellent. Yeah. I, I was really impressed. OK, and who stood out for you today? I would say... The, the one that was no surprise was Odegaard. He was absolute class. But someone I've got my eye on, and, I, and I, the, the, the name escapes me, but it was very similar to the character that um, Sasha Baron playing, Sasha Baron Cohen played in um, The Dictator. I think it's um, Salah Saladin. Is, oh, is it Saladin? Is it Yeah. Really good. I saw him play for the uh, under 23s a couple of weeks ago at Bora mm. Wood. He looks like one for the future. I'd, I'd not heard of him before that, and mm. he really stood out that game. And I thought this game he did as well because I had my eye on him. Yeah, it's an interesting one because I was asking it to ask it to Turkish anchors. I said players like him, players like Wanyeri, you know, look really, really good. Do you keep them this season and try and assimilate them into the first team, or do you look to send, send them out on loan? where they're going to get a lot of game time. Because let's be real, great to see them playing today. But when everybody comes back, <laughs> you know, um, how many games is Wayne Yeri going to be? He'd be lucky to, to, to get a start in because he's got to get past so many top quality first team players. So is it wise to send players like that out on loan? Or do you want to see them in the setup right now? You do both. And... And the way you do it, but you it, can't do both. You can't see, <laughs> you can't send him out on loan and keep him. What, what is it? One or do, what, what are you doing? Uh, you can do both because what you do, you keep them until January if they're not not getting the game time because you have more opportunity up to January with the League Cup. You've got games there that basically Arteta doesn't take mm -hmm. that competition as seriously, so they get more chance with that. If they're progressing, then you keep them for the rest of the season. <laughs> if they're not getting the game time, then you put them out on loan in January. All right, all right. So what, you you keep both of them in, in those two that were mentioned. You yep. keep them both. I, I'd keep. Might not keep Salah Saladin because of his age. I think he's a couple of years younger. Mm. But I would definitely. No, no. When you're is seventeen. Y yeah, mm. but but he's had more. He's had more experience at that level. He looks like he's physically, mm. physically, uh, further forward in his development. So I would I would keep. I'd send Saladin if he if he gets a good loan move, I'd send him out straight away. I think mm. he's at that level, but I'd keep um, Ethan until yeah. at least January. And what do you make of the situation with um, Emma Smith Rowe? He was on the bench tonight, didn't come on. On his way to Fulham, by all accounts, um, they put in an offer of thirty-five million pounds, which looks like that is going to get accepted. Emma Smith Rowe leaving. How do you feel about that? Is that the right decision by Arsenal? Homegrown player is pure profit; they can go and reinvest. Or do you think we should have held on to him? I love that word profit, especially the word pure <laughs> before it. Personally, I'm, I'm sorry to see him go because obviously it hasn't worked out like we thought it would. But 35 million profit, it, it does help. And I think 35 million in the bank is more of a benefit to Arsenal than Emil Smith Rowe on the subs bench. That's the, that's the, mm. the reality. You don't the think this could have been a season that you could have broken in? you know, proved his fitness and broken back into that first team 
and showed us what he was doing a couple of years ago, you just think, time to move. Last season, he didn't really have that many injuries. So the opportunity for him to progress and kick on was last season at his age. Now, it's, I think it's too late for him. If he had another season on the bench and playing the sort of game levels that he was, it would be no good for Arsenal because you'd never get 35 million for him and it'd be no good for him. So I think it's a, it's a good move for both. Mm. And uh, the game on Saturday, looking forward to that now. Man United, that's going to be another big test. Uh, much bigger test. Um, but they look quite sharp tonight, Arsenal. Yeah, they look, look quite sharp. The one thing I was disappointed with was how many people were here. But I don't mm. blame the American fans. I think it's quite smart. I mean, Arsenal totally, if it was Arsenal, maybe it was sort of the, the promoters here, got it totally wrong. A game that was only put together at, at the last minute, no one really had um, you know, much chance to, to sort of make plans to come here. A particularly small stadium, but I think there was about four or 5,000 people there because of how much they charged to get in. A game like that, it would have been much better off for all involved if they'd charged, say, $10, $20 to get in, filled the stadium got the atmosphere and got some of those young players not only to have a performance against another premiership team but given those young players the experience of playing in front of a really big crowd and a vociferous crowd because I've seen how the American fans are and they really get behind the team and there was only a few thousand there and I totally understand that.